in comments, people are like, what happened to the squeaky oven? I'm like, it was gone, thank God. Hey there, it's Amanda, and I am going to be making a flank steak with green sauce. You know how you have these recipes that you make a million times over and over and over? This is one of those recipes where there was like a two year period where <laughs> this was my go-to. It was like, I love green sauce, which, and I still love green sauce. And I love flank steak because it's really affordable. It's really tasty. And I broil it so it's like not too stressful. I don't feel like it's like, it's hard to mess up, which of course I'm probably, I'm probably cursing myself for later in the video. You can use any steak cut you like. If you wanna get fancy and use a more expensive cut, you can go ahead. Um, but I really do like, um, flank steak, which I also use for um, tacos too. Okay, so the first step, as you're seeing, is to just salt it very generously and then let it sit for a little while while it kind of comes to temperature, room temperature, while you prep the rest of the, of the recipe. Now, the green sauce I usually make in a blender or a food processor, but I like, I like a green sauce when it's nice and kind of coarse and there's like you can sort of see the leaves and see the little chunks of anchovy and, and in this case, capers um, and um, and garlic. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna practice my chopping skills today. And I'm gonna do the basil first. And with basil especially, if you're gonna be slicing or chopping basil, you re definitely want a sharp knife because you don't, otherwise, if you're using a dull knife, it's just gonna bruise the leaves and then they're gonna brown on the edges and it's gonna make you sad and it's not gonna look great. So don't do that. And I am using a knife from Shun Cutlery today and it's a great multi-purpose uh, chef's knife. It's, you know, it's seven inches, so it's not too long or bulky and also not, not too short. So it can be used for lots of different tasks. And so let's, let's give this a whirl. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely sharper than most of my knives. And they use a, uh, a method of making the blade that's called Damascus, which makes for a very hard and very sharp blade that holds its edge. You could go finer, but I'm actually gonna leave it like that because I think it's gonna be really nice to have bigger pieces in the sauce. And this is approximately two cups of, of parsley leaves. Now with a green sauce, the biggest, I guess, rule is just that it has to, you know, be green. So that means you could use any there is no rules basically what I'm getting at because you could use any green you like. You could use cilantro, you could use dill, any mix of herbs that you like together, go for it. All right, so we have a lot of really lovely chopped herbs and I'm going to scrape them into this bowl because we're gonna just build the sauce in this bowl by adding all the other ingredients. All right, next up is, is uh, garlic, so it calls for one clove of garlic and I'm going to first give it a light smash to pull the skin off and then I'm going to smash it again using the side of the blade. So in a sauce like this I don't really want to eat a big chunk of garlic so I'm going to try to get this um, pretty fine and if you want you can actually use the side of the blade to kind of mash creating this nice juicy mash of garlic and actually I like that because it pulls the juices out and also allows you to really reduce it more to a pulp than, than chunks. How many anchovies is kind of a, an open-ended question because it really depends on how much you like anchovies. So if you love anchovies and the recipe calls for one, you can add two. If, a, if you don't like them and it calls for two, add one. This one calls for two. Would five. You would add five? Okay, Faki would add five. So if you're at Faki's house, your green sauce is gonna taste bit more anchovy. So there I got like a one and a half. So I am actually going to go and pull out another one. In my next life, I'm going to invent a better way to package anchovies. All right. So we've got some anchovies. This is sort of like two and a half and I'm just going to chop, chop them up. Now here, this is something I actually don't mind. I like getting a little chunk of anchovy, a little mixed up. So I'm going to leave those a little coarse. And then last, we're going to do some capers. Okay. See, this is capers. Capers have a packaging issue too. Now I have now have capers all over. Okay, I'm gonna say that's about a teaspoon. Again, this is a, this is a sort of a two taste situation. We're just adding some brine to a really fragrant sauce, which gives it a little balance, along with some lemon juice, which we're gonna add later. Don't chop those too much because you want a little caper chunk in there. Okay. So I got a dish towel and then I folded it up and I 
dampened it a little bit. And this is just to help hold my bowl so when I'm whisking, it doesn't go crazy. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my um, Piment d'Espelette here. You can add more as you like. I'm gonna add a nice, healthy pinch of salt. But remember, you're adding anchovies and capers, so don't go nuts. And just before I start mixing in the oil, which is essentially gonna kind of emulsify and bring this together, and there's a lot of flexibility there, which I'll show you about, I'm first going to juice a lemon. So, give this a little roll. All right, wow, this is a juicy lemon, nice. And while I'm slicing, I'm going to just cut off the end, because just to make it a little bit nicer. I'm gonna slice this into wedges for serving, because this is a steak recipe where you wanna squeeze some lemon juice over the top. All right, now, let's get to finishing our green sauce. So I put a half a cup of good olive oil in here, and I'm just going to basically slowly work it in. You know, if you were doing this in a blender or a food processor, you would just be doing this through the feed tube. And you can make this sauce as thick and chunky or as smooth and creamy as you like. If you want it smooth and creamy, you definitely want to do it in a blender. Yeah, I kind of want it so that the herbs are just kind of just covered in oil. All right, I am gonna give this a taste. Oh, I know what I forgot to add. <laughs> lemon juice. Now, if you're making this ahead of time, don't add the lemon juice until closer to serving because you don't want it to darken and dull the vibrancy of the green herbs. Okay, so give it another taste. Mmm, okay, that was good. It like really sharpened it up. All right, and then we can set, set that aside. Now we're gonna move on to cooking the steak, which is the last exciting move before slicing and eating. So I didn't put the rack on the very top just because I feel like it gets like too close. Well, I don't know, let me see here. This is a new oven I'm dealing with, so. Oh, you don't have the squeezy one? I know, no oh. more squeaks, no more squeaks. I'm just worried this is gonna be like too close and it's gonna like, set the steak on fire. We'll try it. We can always move it down. Okay, get my broiler going. Now it's time to get the steak in the oven. I've got my broiler going. I use a cast iron pan. You could use a, like a, a heavy uh, baking sheet. I just like using a heavy pan that's gonna hold its heat. And also I like one with sides because it kind of keeps, contains the, you know, the fat that that's, uh, sprays around once it gets hot. All right, so we're gonna stick it in. And what I like to do is like three minutes per side. All right, here goes nothing. I haven't, this is, I haven't actually used the broiler yet. We're experimenting together. All right, well, let's set the timer and see what happens. What I like to do is that while it is doing its cooking in the oven, get a carving board out. Um, and if you're gonna be serving this on a platter, get that ready, which I'm gonna go do. Let the steak rest for a minute. And then you want to serve it up, knead it. Okay, let's see if it's cooking. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It doesn't look very exciting, but it is cooking in there. It's funny, my old, oh yeah, there it goes. My old broiler used to um, have a, a more vivid flame. So you always knew it was on. In fact, when it would go on, it would go whoosh. And I was always afraid like the whole house was gonna blow up. But, um, <laughs> but you knew it was on. <laughs> This one's more subtle. It's like, come on. The three minute buzzer has gone off. Again, I'm dealing with a new broiler, so I don't know how accurate the timing's gonna be. Whoa, okay, wait, looks like it's doing things. Oh yeah, there we go. Oops, maybe I didn't push it back. So that looks good. That's not so much, but we're gonna get that a little. I think it seems like the broiler's um, maybe a little hotter in the back. So I'm gonna push it back there. Okay, three more minutes. All right, buzzers are off. Let's see how it's looking. Oh, okay, that looks good. So what I'm gonna do is immediately put it on here so that it slows down the cooking. I like to let, let the steak cool for a few minutes. Just rest and relax. And then we're gonna slice it up and we are gonna be ready to go. 
Okay, here's the <laughs> moment of truth. Oh, oh yeah. You can cut this into like thick slices if you want. I, I like it thin personally, so that's why I'm doing it this way. If I did three minutes per side and then I let it rest for three minutes. There you go. Now here's how I how I like to do it. Use the knife. Try to grab about half of them. You don't want to lose all those juices. So let them run into the juice trough. Pour them over the meat. There you go. That was a feature that was designed by the Food 52 community, by the way. You can serve the green sauce on the side, or you can just go for it and spread it across the top, which is what I'm going to do, so that everybody gets a little bit when they lift out their pieces of steak. Alrighty, so we have got our flank steak with green sauce, and I'm going to give it a little taste. Oh, I can taste the garlic, I can taste the anchovy. If you have leftover green sauce, put it in a container that, that's not too big. And you can lay a piece of like plastic wrap or wax paper on top, which will help um, slow down the oxidation so it doesn't turn black. So that is my little steak recipe that I'm happy to return to. And I hope you will give it a try and have fun chopping all those herbs. And I'll see you soon. Bye.